you can read English, you can write English, and you can also understand English. But when it comes to speaking, well, you really struggle to speak fluent English, don't you? So basically, this lesson is for all English learners. Because as a teacher, I know that this is a very common problem, where English learners are very discouraged. They tell me that speaking is very difficult. Reading, writing, listening, well, they can manage that. But speaking, it seems to be quite difficult. Now, I have trained many students over many years, and I have worked very hard to find the right way to fix this problem. So this is not gonna be a regular video. I'm not here to tell you to learn English in seven days. I'm not here to tell you to read another book, memorize a new word or learn some new words. No, none of that. These things don't really work. I'm here to offer you really practical tips. And if you follow them, you will see that your fluency will skyrocket because fluent English requires you to have a separate set of skills. You cannot use your skills for reading, writing and listening to speak fluent English. So watch this video until the end because you don't want to miss any of these important tips and these important skills that will help you speak English like a native speaker. So let's fix this problem together. We're going to first understand what you are doing wrong. Because in order to fix a problem, you need to know what the problem is, right? Okay, so let's see why reading, listening and writing does not translate into the ability of speaking well. Why? Let's see why. When you read, when you write and when you listen, you have a lot of time to think about the language that you come across. Let's say, for example, you have read a passage in a book. You come across that sentence and you can spend like five minutes thinking about the sentence structure. Simple past, present continuous. But guess what? Can you do this while speaking? Not really. Speaking requires you to be prepared with what you want to say at the time that you want to say it. So you don't have the time to think and mull over what you're going to say. So basically, you cannot apply this reading skill of analyzing the language and applying it to your speech. It will not work. Honestly, it won't work. So what does that mean? It means that you have to learn a new skill to come up with sentences promptly. So what is the skill? Pay attention here. You need to learn how to build a database of sentences which can be used in a variety of speaking situations. Let me help you understand this. Let's assume you want to get ready for an important event. What do you normally do? Well, for me, I would organize my outfit, my shoes, my makeup. I do all of this a day in advance so that I look really good for that important event, correct? Well, Similarly, you need to organize your language in order to be ready for speaking in different situations. So, you need to make a list of the different situations that you are going to speak in. So, I'll tell you what I did. When I was a college student, I was learning to speak English fluently. So, I would make a list of various situations that I would, you know, probably face in the day. So, in my list, uh, I kind of included a situation where I spoke to my teachers to ask permission or to give opinions. So in this situation, I would make a list of what sentences would I use. Okay, so let me think. For asking permission, I would need a sentence with model verbs. So I would make a list of the sentences like, would you please help me with? Or could you go over my assignment? Now let's say if I want to give an opinion, what kind of sentence structures would I need? I would probably require sentence structures where I'm using the simple present tense, where I can say things like, I believe that we can look at things from a different perspective. 
or I might say something like, I think this theory is a great idea, however, we can. In fact, even when I was in college, I, I did a small, you know, part-time job, which was in sales. And um, I wanted to make sure that when I sell a product, I would sound like a fluent speaker. So again, I made my list. So I would include a lot of conditional sentences in that list. And I would say something like, if you buy this, we will give you a one year warranty. So you see, depending on the context, depending on the situation, I had my list of sentence structures ready, ready to speak whenever I was called upon to do so in any situation. That ensured that I was well organized, well prepared, and I was ready to speak in real conversations. And I did this until it became a habit, until I became fluent. Yes, preparation of what you are going to say in typical situations is a great start to become fluent and confident as your English becomes much better. Now, this is a tried and tested method. Believe me, it definitely works. Prepare and organize your speech and get ready to deliver when the time comes to actually open your mouth and speak. So what's the other mistake you are making? Now, the problem is that the sentence structures in texts that are used for reading and writing are not the same style that you use when you're talking or when you're speaking. So these texts that you read or write, they use formal sentence structures. On the other hand, spoken English, do you speak it very formally? Or are you more casual? Are you more natural? Right? So we need to use natural sounding phrases. For example, a written text would say something like, the parcel was delivered promptly. Too formal, right? But if I were to say this in spoken English, I would not use the passive voice. I would say something as simple as, they delivered the parcel on time. So the problem is that a lot of learners they try to use the sentence structures, those formal sentence structures in texts and reports and try to apply those in spoken English. The problem is it makes you sound unnatural. You don't sound like you're fluent. You sound like you're reading out of a script. So what do you do? The second skill, you learn to rephrase these sentences and you have to make them sound natural. So. To do that, what you can do is you can make a list of phrasal verbs for smart English conversations, or you can use a more narrative style of speech when you are talking. So make sure you work at sounding natural. Don't sound textbookish. When you sound natural, you will want to speak more and eventually you will grow in confidence as far as your speaking ability is concerned. Okay, now we have another reason why reading, listening and writing does not help you with speaking. Okay, so the answer to that is the inequality between the sound and the spelling in English. Yes, English is such a language where the sound and the spelling, they don't match, right? So you can be great at spelling and reading and writing which is a good thing really, but that does not help you with speaking. So what is the skill you should know? You should learn speech sounds. When you are able to learn all the speech sounds, as opposed to the spellings, you become more confident to use the correctly pronounced words in actual conversations. In fact, according to research, People who learn good pronunciation through speech sounds are more confident to speak in conversations. In fact, we have a lot of videos on speech sounds and word stress that you must look up to understand this in detail. So go ahead, learn speech sounds within the words and don't rely on spelling alone. Good pronunciations automatically makes you confident to speak more and get more fluent. And 
last of all, you cannot use the skill of reading, listening and writing. Why? Because speaking is not a solo activity. I mean, think about it. You can read by yourself. You can listen by yourself. You can write by yourself. But speaking, can you speak by yourself? Not a chance. So what does that mean? It means that reading, listening and writing keep you in your comfort zone. But speaking requires you to step out of your comfort zone and actually put your language skills to the test. So this is really a, a psychological issue because a lot of people tell me that they are really scared that people will make fun of them if they make a mistake. A lot of my students, they get scared. They tell me that they don't know what to say because they feel that they are going to be judged. So their fear and their nervousness does not allow them to come out of the reading, writing and listening mentality. But what is the skill you need to know in order to come out of this? To take care of this, I would recommend that you record yourself while you are speaking and ask a friend or a teacher like me to go through the recording after which you must re-record yourself and correct the mistakes on which you are given feedback. Remember, like I said, speaking is not a solo activity and preparing for speaking is not a solo activity either. But when you prepare yourself by recording what you want to say, you will hear enough of yourself to actually have the confidence to go out and speak in real conversations. So go ahead, record yourself and get the confidence to speak fluently. Well, that's it from me on this lesson on how to speak fluently, even though you are probably good at reading, writing and listening right now. I'm telling you, if you employ these tips and if you put them and practice them regularly, you will see a stark difference in the way you speak now versus your potential to speak fluently. I'll be back with some more lessons. Keep practicing and tell me how these tips have helped you. Take care and have a nice day.